I know you man. I you can make that happen. All right, we can get started now. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Thanks, Chair. <laughs> I'm Jim McClary. I'm the administrator here at the Law Enforcement Officers Hall of Fame. And on behalf of our staff here, we'd like to welcome you for this induction ceremony. To get us started, I'd like to get uh, Eric Skidmore, Reverend with the South Carolina Law Enforcement Assistance Program, to start us with. Let's pray together. Our gracious God, as we read in the scriptures, you've been our dwelling place in all the generations before the mountains were brought forth or Ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. On this day we gather to give thanks for the life and the service of these honorable men. Gave their energy and in intelligence and their imaginations and their hearts to the service of the citizens of our state. May they be remembered as officers of compassion, of justice, and may we never forget their service and their dedication to duty. Father, we don't know what the future holds, but we know the future belongs to you. And may the officers who follow in their footsteps indeed become instruments of your peace. As we go from this place, giving thanks for these lives well lived and the precious life together. Lord, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Hear this prayer as we celebrate these lives. We 
pray in thy name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. The South Carolina Law Enforcement Officers <laughs> Hall of Fame was established by the General Assembly in 1974. It is a memorial to law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty and in recognition of the selfless dedication of all law enforcement officers in the day-to-day -day performance of their duties. The rotunda here was established to memorialize the officers who have made the ultimate sacrifice while protecting the citizens of South Carolina. The Hall of Fame uh, is a division of South Carolina Department of Public Safety, and all of our uh, inductions are approved by an advisory committee. That advisory committee consists of SLED Chief Mark Keel, South Carolina Department of Corrections Director Brian Sterling, South Carolina Department of Natural Resources Director Robert Bowles, South Carolina Law Enforcement Officers Association and Police Chiefs Association Executive Director J.J. Jones, South Carolina Fraternal Order of Police President Terry Ganey, and the South Carolina Sheriff's Association is represented by Newberry County Sheriff Lee Foster. The chairman of the advisory committee is South Carolina Department of Public Safety Director Robert Woods. Director Woods. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Woods. I'm the director of the South Carolina Department of Public Safety and chairman of the Law Enforcement Officers Hall of Fame Advisory Committee. It is my great honor to welcome you to the South Carolina Law Enforcement Officers Hall of Fame and this year's line of duty death induction ceremony. I'm especially humbled to welcome the family members of the five officers we are honoring today. After adjusting the past two ceremonies for the COVID-19 pandemic, we are very pleased to return to a single in-person ceremony this year and allow families and loved ones to gather and witness this special moment together in one place. Before we continue, I'd like to recognize the Hall of Fame staff led by Administrator Jim, Jim McCleary. Each year, Jim and his team invest tremendous time and effort to maintaining this cherished place and commemorating the service of these fallen heroes. It is their hard work and commitment that ensures this ceremony and this memorial wall will continue to be treated with honor and dignity. While we can never repay the officers whose names we are about to add to this wall, today's ceremony is a gesture of gratitude by the people of South Carolina to recognize and remember the bravery and service of these fallen heroes. Scripture tells us in the Gospel of John that greater love hath no man than this, that a man may lay down his life for his friends. <coughs> Despite the dangers and demands of the job, these men put on the uniform and the badge every day with a dedication to serving their state and their communities <coughs> that ultimately led them to selflessly make the supreme sacrifice. For those of us who still wear the badge, it is important to remember that honoring these men should never be limited to, to this one ceremony. We must honor them every day by following their example and continuing to serve with the same integrity, commitment, and courage. These heroes are no longer with us, but their sacrifice has left an imprint on all of us, and their selfless service will always remain an example for all men and women who wear the badge. Whether their death occurred last year or many years ago, each of these heroes made the ultimate sacrifice and deserve this place of honor. Thank you, and may God, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Director. <clears throat> one of the most satisfying things about this job is being able to find out about and recognize officers who lost their lives in the line of duty, but were also lost in history. Uh, when we find out information on an officer who passed away, uh, we try to do everything we can to make sure that they uh, get the honor and recognition that they deserve. So our first induction today is an historical one dated back to 1918. Town Marshal Tobias R. Penninger of the Sharon Police Department, which is no longer in existence, but is in York County, is end of watch was September 30th of 1918. T.R. Penninger was born on July 20th, 1864, and grew up on the family farm in Rowan County, North Carolina. 
He married Miss Minnie Fisher in 1891, and together they had two sons, Fred and Gillen. Gillen would later serve as chief of police in Gastonia. By 1918, T.R. was the owner of a blacksmith shop in Sharon and also serving as a town marshal. On Sunday night, September 29, 1918, Mary Brown was charged for the operation of a brothel in the town limits of Sharon. Her two sons, Frank and Mills Moore, surrendered their automobile as a surety bond against the $25 fine. The automobile was left in the custody of Marshall Penninger at his blacksmith shop. At around noon on Monday, September 30th, the two brothers, along with Mayor J.L. Whitesides, went to Penninger's blacksmith shop to redeem the car. After paying the $25 fine, the marshal refused to redeem the car because he had an additional warrant charging the two brothers with disorderly conduct, also relating to the brothel. As he began to read the warrant, Frank Moore drew a pistol and struck Marshal Penninger over the head. Mills Moore then drew his pistol and covered the mayor. When Marshal Penninger turned to go into his shop to retrieve his pistol, Mills Moore shot him twice in the back. Marshal Penninger collapsed and died on the floor. The two brothers covered Mayor Whitesides with their pistols as they turned and fled. Frank Moore was arrested in December of 1918, convicted, sentenced to serve 10 years in prison. He escaped several months later and was never heard from again. Mills Moore was arrested in 1923, convicted, and served life in prison. Today, 115 years uh, later, we remember the service and sacrifice of Sharon Town Marshal T.R. Penninger as he's inducted into South Carolina Law Enforcement Officers Hall of Fame. York County Sheriff Kevin Tolson is here to hang the flag on the wall. <clears throat> Just a few words, if you would like. I'd like to first recognize Charlie, Ted, and Lindsay Penninger, who are here representing the family. It doesn't matter how long the sacrifice was made. It matters that the sacrifice is honored. Yes. And there's a lot of sacrifices in this room. Um, and he died a very brave death by two cowards who um, we're still looking for the one that's on the loose, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find, and the brothel's gone. <laughs> so uh, it is my honor today to, uh, again, 105 years later, it does not matter. <coughs> he's watching, and I hope, I hope that he's honored today to finally be recognized for the sacrifice that he made uh, to our community. So. Thank you to the Penningers. I want to thank uh, our PIO, Trent Ferris, who did a tremendous amount of research in locating the history of this uh, to make this day happen. And our next step is the federal level, uh, which is a little more difficult than the state level. But <laughs> they want to make sure that it's right, and it will be right. And uh, I'll be honored to uh, join the Penningers in, in D.C. during a National Police Week uh, one year and in hopefully the near future. Thank you all. To the family of oh, Officer okay. Penninger, South Carolina Law Enforcement Officers Hall of Fame, honoring Tobias R. Penninger, Sharon Police Department, who died in the line of duty September 30th, 1918. Blessed are the peacemakers. Thank you. Thank you. I'll let y'all fight over it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's My not going to get this <laughs> okay, one anyway. good. Yeah, their uh, their mother is 88 years old. Couldn't couldn't be here, but uh, one of those is going to go to her. So, Very good. thank you to the thank Hall you, of Fame and to the Academy and, and everything they do to make this day special. Thank you, Sheriff. You're the one that brought it to our attention, so we we appreciate that. 
Our next inductee is Deputy First Class John William Berry III from the Spartanburg County Sheriff's Office. End of watch September 19th, 2021. John W. P. D. Berry III was born in Spartanburg County in 1976 to John William Pete Berry II and Ellen Dean Berry. Pete graduated from Broome High School in 1995. In July 1999, he married Allison Harris. Together they had a daughter, Molly, and a son, Will. Petey joined the Spartanburg Police Department in 2011, and where he served until 2016 when he joined the Spartanburg County Sheriff's Office. Deputy First Class Barry served as a school resource officer assigned to Drayton Mills Elementary School and the McCarthy Tesler School in Spartanburg County School District 7. He was admired, respected, and loved by the faculty, parents, and students. Like most law enforcement officers, Deputy First Class Barry continued to serve and report for duty during the pandemic. On September 2nd, 2021, Deputy First Class Barry tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. He was hospitalized during the following week at Spartanburg Medical Center. His treatment continued until September 19th when he succumbed to the virus. Today we induct Deputy First Class John W. P. D. Barry III into the Law Enforcement Officers Hall of Fame where we, he will always be remembered for his service and sacrifice to the citizens of South Carolina. Spartanburg County Sheriff Chuck Wright, if you would please help us. Thank you. As I said earlier, I refuse to remember uh, the day they went home to be with King Jesus. I prefer to remember all the big smiles that I used to see on him and, and he told me that his best day was when he came over to work at the sheriff's office, which honored me very much. Um, I don't know if anybody in his family has made it here. Uh, is anybody from Pete's family here today? Sir, they, they weren't taken to the funeral. Okay. Well, I, I just want you to know uh, that we will never forget Petey. I don't know him as John W. Barry III. I knew him as Petey. <laughs> uh, he was a wonderful human being, so he, he will be missed. Thank you. the awards for the family. I'll, I'm going to get Lieutenant J.T. Howland to come up because he was he was one of the ones that always took care of things. So on behalf of the Berry family, I want to give this to Lieutenant J.T. Howland, who is more than a lieutenant. He's a friend and a leader and a good godly example for these men. So thank you. Yes, sir. And just very quickly, if I may, uh, you may. On, on behalf of, of Allison, she did want me to uh, could just pass along her thanks and her appreciation. Uh, she's an educator. She's a principal at one of our local elementary schools. And any of you that have children know that we are in the middle of the SC Ready testing. Uh, and it is uh, almost impossible for a principal to leave her post uh, at, this, at this point. But she did want me to tell you uh, how much she does appreciate it and uh, how much she cherishes you all memory Pete. So thank you very much on behalf of the Berry family. Our next induction is Corporal Roy Andrew Grubar, Jr., Casey Police Department, end of watch April 24, 2022. Drew was born in June 1994 in West Columbia. He was the son of Roy and Sonia Wheeler Barr. His commitment to public service started at an early age. At 14, he began working with the Sandy Ridge Volunteer Fire Department. He later served with the Manetta Volunteer Fire Department. And Drew graduated from Batesburg High School and by the time he was 19, he was serving as an emergency medical technician with Lexington County EMS. Drew served with the Casey Fire Department as a certified firefighter, and in, 19, in, excuse me, in 2016, Drew joined the Casey Police Department as a public safety officer. While attending the South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy as a trainee, he did ride-alongs with the officers from Casey Police Department. On May 27, 2017, while on a ride along, Barr and his partner, Sergeant Evan Antley, um, were both shot during a foot pursuit. Both officers recovered and Barr returned to complete his academy training. After graduation, Officer Barr served as a patrol officer. 
In 2020, he was promoted to the K-9 unit, where he worked closely with his K-9 partner, Molly. On April 24, 2022, at around 2.45 a.m., Corporal Barr responded to a 911 call concerning a domestic disturbance. Upon arrival, Corporal Barr, along with two other officers, were met in the front yard by a witness. During the discussion, shots were fired from a window on the second floor of the residence. One of the bullets struck Corporal Barr. He was evacuated from the scene and transported to the hospital, but his injury was not survivable. In honor of his service and sacrifice, today we induct Corporal Roy A. Drew Barr, Jr. into the South Carolina Law Enforcement Officers Hall of Fame, never to be forgotten. If Casey Police Chief Chris Cowan. I feel like I have to. Thanks, sheriffs. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't planning on it. Um, you know, when Noah was building the boat, people looked at him and said, why? What, what are you doing? What, why would you do that? Think about Drew. He was shot in the line of duty, and he went back to work. And he was killed in the line of duty. And you think about that. Why would you do that? Drew was a public servant, but he was also one hell of a human being. And this is a huge honor for us to make sure that we, we don't forget him. So somebody told me recently that if we don't, if we stop saying his name, you've dishonored him. He's been dead, he's dead twice. That's what they said. And so I think it's imperative that not only we put him on the wall, but we say his name every day and that we remember his service and his sacrifice. And so that's what we'll do by honoring him today. So thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Deputy First Class Austin D. Aldridge, Spartanburg County Sheriff's <clears throat> Office. End of watch, June 21st, 2022. Austin was born in Greenville on my birthday. Excuse me. 1997. <clears throat> to Derek and Deborah Aldridge. He graduated from Wren High School in 2016 <clears throat> and attended North Greenville University. Austin joined the Spartanburg County Sheriff's Office on April 8, 2019, graduated from the Criminal Justice Academy later that year. He was married to Jessica Link Aldridge on September 14, 2019. On Father's Day, <coughs> 2022, Austin learned he was going to be a father. <sighs> Sorry. At around 3.20 in the afternoon on Tuesday, June 21st, Deputy First Class Austin Aldridge responded to a domestic violence call in the Oak Forest subdivision. As Deputy Aldridge knocked on the front door of the residence, the door swung open and he was shot from ambush. Bystanders provided medical attention until EMS arrived. Deputy Aldridge was taken to Spartanburg <laughs> Regional Medical, medical Center but he succumbed to his injury later that night. On February 21st, Jessica Aldridge announced the birth of their daughter, Claire Austin Aldridge. Austin loved his family, he loved policing, and he loved his community. Today we induct Deputy First Class Austin Aldridge into the South Carolina Law Enforcement Officers Hall of Fame where his service and sacrifice will never be forgotten. I've been told the price we pay for loving people is crying and hurting, and I promise you I'm going to pay it every day because I choose to love people like Austin did. I refuse to remember him on June the 21st. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to remember the time that that big knucklehead come in there with a bicycle bungee corded to the front of his car because he cared about people. 
His mom and dad are here, and I'm sorry you have to hear that all over again. We love that boy. We will honor him every day by mentioning his name. He's worthy. I know my king is enough. I don't know why these things happen. But I know King Jesus is enough. It's a lot of courage when they come out here and hear all this stuff. Ain't nothing we can do to replace your son, but we love you guys and we're going to be by your side forever. Thanks, sister. <clears throat> Our last one is Master Police Officer Terrell Owens Riley, Columbia Police Department. End of watch September 9th, 2022. Terrell Owens Riley was born in Columbia on January 21st, 1991 to Roger Keaton and Shauna Riley. He graduated from Dutch Fork High School in 2009 and enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. He attained the rank of corporal, served in the global war on terror where he completed two tours of duty in Afghanistan. Following his honorable discharge in 2013, Corporal Owens Riley joined the Columbia Police Department. He was assigned to patrol the North Main Street area of Columbia until 2016 when he transferred to the metro region. Terrell was involved in numerous community events. He took pride in helping to bridge the gap between the police and the neighborhood he grew up in. He also enjoyed training and mentoring the new officers that joined the Columbia Police Department family. Terrell loved his family, his fiance Ashley, especially his daughter, Akima. Terrell had ambitions to join the Columbia Police Department SWAT team. Leading up to the trial, tryouts, Terrell encouraged and trained with the other SWAT candidates. On September 24, 2022, while participating in a SWAT team assessment, he suffered a medical emergency during a training exercise. Master Police Officer Terrell Owens Riley was taken to a local hospital where he suffered a cardiac arrest. He could not be revived. Today we induct Master Police Officer Terrell Owens Riley into the South Carolina Law Enforcement Officers Hall of Fame, where his service and sacrifice to the city and his country will never be forgotten. Columbia Police Chief Skip Holbrook. <laughs> Director, Sheriff's, uh, Chief Cowan, I, you know, families and our, our friends, I mean, these, um, these services are powerful, and um, it, it reminds me why I, I wear this uniform, put this badge on. I mean, it's such a it's such a noble profession and calling, but it's um, it, it is it's powerful. And, I mean, this is this is our family here, and um, this is Terrell's family here, his fiance Ashley, and um, you know these are tragic stories of young, courageous people that wear this badge that um, have given that ultimate sacrifice. And, you know, it, we still have so many unanswered questions of why. Um, and um, we just know it was too soon. And, um, you know, we, we have to put our faith in each other and put our faith in God that um, there is a, a reason. But um, I know Terrell was young, strong, proud, um, he went by O, and um, he um, he was loved and respected by many, um, and he, you know, went out with his boots on, as they say. Um, I've actually I've taken a lot of pride in in watching you pick yourself up and and carry on and in, um, in his honor, I think, in mom. Um, 
you know, just how you and, and the family persevered through that, uh, the tough days that followed his passing was very inspirational. And we, um, we take that strength with us every day and, um, and please know that he won't ever be forgotten. And we do draw strength from that. And um, thank you for recognizing Terrell. And this is, for the family, this is an ultimate honor. Uh, we're, we're proud uh, that he is where he needs to be, and, um, and it's my honor to put this on the wall. Thank you, Chief. Uh, again, I'd like to thank our uh, Hall of Fame staff, Emily Harrison, Robert Wagner, uh, all the other DPS staff members that helped us with the ceremony. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy Director Jackie Swindler and his staff. Um, their people help us a lot getting ready for this event. Um, as you see, we're a family here, and uh, the law hurts everybody. Uh, just be assured that your loved ones and co-workers will always be remembered here. Uh, thank you for entrusting their memory to us for safekeeping. Um, thank you for attending today. And remember, you're always welcome to come here. Reverend Skidmore. Hear these words of the benediction. Go out now remembering in the goodness of God you were born. In the providence of God you've been kept to this day and in the love of God revealed in his great love for us. You are redeemed as these men are redeemed for purposes unafraid. May the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank you.